My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Transport Fever 2 and the Land of the Free series based in the Northeast Corridor of the United States. At the moment, we're just hanging out in the middle of New York City and you'll be able to tell that the roads have been upgraded to the more modern style looking roads. This means we have reached 1920. This is something that happened during the outro of the previous video. So in between that video and this one, I have gone through and upgraded a lot of the roads in most of the major cities. And I've also gone through and edited all of the old style semaphore signals for the new light stack signals as well. We also have the high speed tracks now available to us. So what I've done is our passenger lines now run on the high speed tracks. Of course, they can't utilise the new speeds available to them. They're capped at about 63 miles per hour at the moment. But as soon as we start unlocking the, the faster locomotives, then we're in a prime position to take advantage and we can have some real high speed trains for our passenger services. The cargo lines have not been updated yet because you don't get the high speed cargo wagons until I think it's the year 2000 or something like that so we've got a long time to go before we have to concern ourselves with that. So let's bring up the user interface. We literally have just tipped into 1920, did I say 1920? I meant 1925 so that was a mistake if I did indeed say 1920 earlier but it is 1925 and we literally have just entered 1925. So let's start the game we have 1.3 billion dollars available and a cash flow of 70 million so things are looking pretty good one thing i've also done is i rearranged this bridge that linked manhattan to brooklyn and queens so before it came up here and dropped down then it was very very steep now i've stretched it out a little bit and we now come from this avenue here over into here and it does mean our buses have to take a slightly longer route to get into our exchange over here. However, the trade-off with that is there's no more waiting around for the level crossing on the passenger line here. That's now free and open. So previously then, we've been working on producing some goods that we were intending to ship into New York City. And we've been supplying the goods factory over here in Wilmington. If we just head over there now, here it is. As you can see, we are getting both of the raw resources delivered into this factory now, so we're in a prime position to start producing the goods at our leisure. My current thinking is the goods will be delivered to the freight exchange we have just between Jersey and Brooklyn, right here. And then we're going to ship them via, well, a ship, over to this dock over here at New York City for the final delivery then into the uh, centre of New York City itself. So let's make a start with that. So the first thing we are going to want to set up is the harbour that's going to draw the goods from the Jersey City freight hub and then carry them over the water into Manhattan. So what I'm going to do here first of all is actually just elongate this stretch of river that we have just here just to make sure we can get our harbour in some nice navigable waters and have it reasonably close to our freight hub. If you check the overlay, yes all this is open to shipping so everything's looking good so far. So we're going to need a cargo harbour and we're going to have a large cargo harbour and we're going to start with just the one terminal. We may have more later on but for now one is going to be more than enough. And if we pop that just there, and we'll rename this to the Jersey City Freight Hub, much like the rail station, just to indicate that it's all part of the same complex. In fact, we'll change it to Jersey City Freight Port. What we also need to do, just to make sure we have a working connection, because we're not going to get a road over there with a working connection, especially because eventually we're going to need train lines down here as well. So what we're going to do instead is... We're going to put down another set of platforms along here, like this, and then have some cargo buildings along here. 
and that way we can put a road connection in this area and everything will be linked up and everybody will be happy. Let's put a few of the large cargo buildings down. Not only do they have the aesthetic of looking like a busy interchange and a busy freight hub, they also obviously boost our cargo capacity at the station. So now we're just going to smooth off the front of those buildings. And now with a simple road connection that runs across the front of the harbour, so we have a connection there, and then we'll bring it up to there. So it's pretty much a road to nowhere at the moment, but that's fine. Might do some something with that off camera. But the main thing is everything now links together. Well, the uh, the truck stop and the port don't quite link together, but the train station does link to both the cargo, so the truck station over here, and our new port. So what we can do now is head over to the port for New York City or Manhattan and we can see that's got a connection to the roads here because it highlights the uh, the pedestrian path so that's working correctly but what we are going to need is a truck station for this area and we'll go we'll go for a large one and we'll put that just there so they'll have no option but to have to turn around on the platform which as you may know is something I try and avoid where possible and let's bring it in to that junction just there the next thing we need is a drop off point in the centre of town for all the goods to be delivered into now it seems like we're centred along a long strip here so hopefully we can catch all or at least 95% of them with one unload point which it looks like we can if we place it just there so the first line we're going to set up is the truck route which is going to be delivering the plastics sorry the goods it's goods of course it isn't plastics and what sort of color do we want to use I think we'll use that one we'll just have them set to their normal loading configuration but we will of course not remove the truck station from their loading orders what we do want to do is make sure they are only picking up the goods and nothing else New York City North can probably be renamed to New York City Port and then again it matches so it matches this here and this will be our goods delivery for New York let's call it NYC goods deliveries very good we have a truck station right here which we can utilize to buy the trucks to handle the deliveries and we're going to use the Mac ACs and we'll use the tarpaulin trucks because they have an increased capacity over the flatbeds and to begin we'll have five of those let's give them the very high maintenance so the noise pollution that they emit is reduced as much as possible and sign them to the line so initially of course they're not going to be delivering much at all because there's nothing there for them to pick up but that's okay it's there ready for us so the next line is going to be the shipping line as we can see there is a valid connection between the two so everything is open and navigable and we'll use the same color that we're using for the delivery line now here we will set these to have a full load before they depart and again just making sure it's only the goods that they're picking up from the freight hub at Jersey and did we go for S for shipping for these let's just verify yes we did as we can see they're S Brooklyn fuel so this will be S New York City goods okay again we can now buy the ship we want cargo and uh, we'll use a large one and um, the largest that we can use in terms of size and capacity is the Klondike the Vandal does have higher capacity but it only carries uh, fluids so we need to use the Klondike and I think one is going to be more than enough for this let's get that maintenance cracked up very high again because why not we're making enough money to compensate for that and it's going to be on the line now so this ship will be waiting here for a considerable amount of time for a full load to become available but that's okay 
So the final link in the chain is of course the rail line that's going to deliver the goods themselves over to Jersey Freight Hub. So we'll have you come into there. We already have an available platform, so that's okay. Using the same color that we've used throughout this whole delivery line. And let's just check if it's doing, not doing anything unusual, which I don't believe it is. It's going where I envisaged, envisaged it would go. Just tripping over my words there, you have to pardon me for that. Yeah, we're going straight through there. We are going straight through there. There might be some holdups here because of the, uh, the steel train being loaded. So what we might have to do here is change that to a two-way signal and have our train come down this track on its return leg. So let's just do that first of all. So first of all, no, it's not one way anymore. And we want that to be a double slip switch. Now, if we return to that line, we should, in theory, be able to tell it to come down here. Now, to do that, we're going to need some sort of waypoint or signal. So we'll use a waypoint because they have a different design. And what shall we have? Which one do we want to use? We'll use a concrete small whistle post for stations. So if we were to put that there and then return to the line, and after the Jersey Freight Hub, make sure it comes back this way. Now we can't actually click that waypoint. Perhaps it's because there's no... Oh no, the, the train can get back onto the correct side of the tracks via this double slip switch. Sorry, this diamond slip switch here. So maybe we will need a signal for this then. So that's no problem. We can do that. So again, it needs to be a two-way signal for this. And we want you to come back that way. And in fact, we want you to go through that direction as well, which we can do by telling it to hit this signal here on its way through. That means there's now no longer any tripping up on the steel train as it's being loaded. So the goods trains can pass straight on through without any complication. So at the goods factory then we want them to be fully loaded of course and we'll have them wait as long as that may need and they're only loading goods and when they get here they're not loading anything at all so rc for the rail cargo and this is wilmington to jersey goods freight all right so now we can head over to worcester to our depot and purchase the train that we want to run this new line so let's have a look. Locomotives, which would we like to use for this? I think we'll go for the 282 Mikado. And in terms of the consist, of course, we're going to use box cars with the correct colour scheme. And we'll go for 12, I think. Yeah, that's a decent enough speed. And to begin with, we'll just go for one of these. No, we will, we'll start off with two. What the heck? So that's 22 million. Back down over here. And away they go. So very soon, New York will start receiving the goods that it requires for growth. What do we have here? The 4122 Class 9000, a real beast of a locomotive and something that we might want to consider using on some of our very profitable long haul lines. So let's just bring up the line statistics and decide which one we'd like to use. So let's filter it so we're only looking at our rail lines and go via balance. I think perhaps this train would be an option for us. The grain freight from Connecticut to New York. It's a fairly long train. I don't want to use it on the fuel delivery trains that run from Jersey to Boston. I'm happy with them using the MILW Class EP2 electric locomotive. So yes, we'll go with the grain freight. And we'll do a quick comparison first of all, using just two of them to save a bit of space on our screen. So let's drop off the Mikado 
and replace it with the class 9000 but let's have a look here well look at that that is insane far 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 superior and that to me indicates we can go ahead and stick some more gondolas on here should we so wish so if we go for another four of those and we're still in the good category so let's try another four that takes us to 305 meters in terms of our train length and we're still in the good category let's see if we can get this to 300 and it's still classed as good right I think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna leave it there so that's an almighty train so we'll do that for all of them so first of all let's do the uh, the gondolas on this train so up to 300 then to the locomotive what does it look like when it's colored actually well that's fine it's only covering coloring the cab roof and now let's include the others as well and do the same for these 71 million pounds well I'll call it what it is 72 million pounds for this but what the heck we're making the money we may as well splurge out a little bit and here we go here's one of the class 9000s right here yes a very very powerful looking locomotive and you know what I think we probably could investigate the possibility of using this on the fuel delivery trains that run from Jersey into Boston so let's do that let's head over to Jersey where's our station here it is here's one of our trains now which is quite useful and let's see the difference here we've already got 300 capacity on this locomotive or this consist so chucking you on so you have the yeah you're not quite as fast and uh, let's have a look at the costs here two point let's call it 2.2 million versus 2 million so in fact the MILW is somewhat cheaper and it also has reduced emissions so mm, but I do like the class 9000 so even though it's going to cost us more no we'll leave those trains as they are we'll not modify those ones we have them on our grain freight trains after all and they are going a reasonably long distance I mean we could consider swapping out the train that hauls the plastics from the Exton chemical plant down to the Wilmington goods factory because I do believe I opted for the MILW on that one let's see where is it I guess it's up here at station yes it is and yes as we can see it is an electric train so shall we stick a class 9000 on that why not I mean it is a wonderful looking locomotive and it is nice to see it thundering through what's this is that a light yes it, no, and it's a tannoy uh, yes as I was saying it is good to see it thundering across the map so I think it's worthwhile just swapping it out on a few lines here and there we're not going to be overkill and chuck it on all of our lines because that would be you know a little bit too ridiculous despite the fact we're making plenty of money and we probably could afford to do it right so let's head back over to New York in fact now Wilmington where we were we should start seeing goods being produced which we are which is good not too many at the moment only eight so far we have plenty of stock I guess when the train arrives and starts picking up its load we will uh, see an increase there let's see if we can spot the train on its way over I'm gonna guess it's gonna be somewhere around here is that the train right there I do believe it is yes well there's one of them we did get two of them if you recall so they're making their way through I'm gonna say that is the first one yeah here's our is that our second one just there no that's a planks train has our second one left the depot yes it has okay let's just see if we can find it in fact let's find it nice and easy by just doing this so train 58 is that the one we were just looking at um, yes I think it was and 59 where are you no it was 59 we were looking at okay so they're not too far apart from one another so they're both gonna get to Wilmington at roughly the same time 
So what's the next venture then, do we think? So we have Brooklyn being supplied with fuel and food. We still need to do machinery and tools at some point. New York will soon start to receive the goods that they're asking for. Jersey City is getting the food, but not the bricks. So we could consider getting some bricks down here. I mean, we have, what is it, one, two, three, four cities nearby requesting bricks. So there is a large demand for bricks in this area. And we could have them all dropped off here and then shipped on their way via whatever means we deem best whether that be for example road delivery into edison because it's not too far for them to go so that's reasonable enough jersey city again would be trucks hauling them or just in the short distance and then when we consider somewhere like yonkers and queens we might want to look into some uh, extra shipping routes down here what we could do is you could have a bridge that comes over all of this and connects into this road here so the trucks would only have a short journey to go to get into Queens and then from here it's only a short haul into Yonkers as well so I think that's probably the next step so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put the road in first of all before the AI starts filling up this area with their own roads and we don't have the space available to uh, to achieve what we're trying to achieve so if we put our bridge in is that no nope, I want to go one step higher and that should how is that in terms of collision oh, it's a little low how there we go that's high enough and how does it look it doesn't look too bad perhaps if we had it a little more symmetrical on either side I think that's you know, back a little bit more shall we say about there and of course we want to change the bridge style as well to this one yeah I think that looks okay do we want to use a slightly high capacity road perhaps a four lane road sure yep yeah that'll work for me so let's take that and then if we get this back down to ground level like that and bring this around and put a connection point into there shall we have earthworks there yeah we'll have a raised bit of earthworks there we'll remove those traffic lights at some point do we want to upgrade that road i'm going to say yes and what the heck we'll upgrade that one as well just for completion sake although we don't really need to now we want to get this over this body of water so I think what we'll do we'll have it drop down a little maybe to 25 meters how does that look now it's probably a little bit low let's keep it at the, uh, the existing height then let's keep it at 29 I believe it was because we might need some ships to pass under here at some point in the future and if we go to there okay and shall we say get rid of that little road there not that bit there though shall we have it come down into here or into let's have it come down into here I think hopefully this will look okay it won't be too steep let's see that's a bit aggressive but we can just dip it down a bit like that and it just takes the edge off it yeah that's fine I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the traffic lights that we have at these junctions here. I don't think we need them. So then from this... What's the word? I'm looking for a truck station. That's the one. So from this truck station here, we can now have access into Queens to deliver the bricks. And the goods, for that matter. That's quite handy. And also into Yonkers as well for the bricks. And as I said for Edison and Jersey City. Well, Jersey City is all ready to go. We have this road connection here. Edison, we could long haul it all the way around here if we wanted to, or we could come up with another solution. Of course, all this is uh, dependent on us actually getting some bricks brought down here. So let's use Yonkers and let's find our nearest brick production plant.
So I think it's likely to be this one at Springfield. No, no, this one over here at Hartford. Which is actually quite handy because this one is already supplying both Kingston or Providence and Worcester. And this one will be supplying all of those cities in the New York area. So really this the full production we don't want to be splitting it all over the map if you know what I mean this will be focused solely on this area here so stone we have access to fairly readily what's our uh, we're already maxed out here and so we might need to consider using a separate quarry however we don't we I mean we have this one no that's a construction materials plant that's not a quarry we might need to find ourselves another supplier for the Hartford brickworks. Looking around, I can't see anything in the immediate vicinity, which is rather... And we have this one here, but that is a fair old trek. I mean, it is doable, but it's just perhaps a little bit too far for what we need. But I think it's going to be the better option than slowing down or risk slowing down any production over here because some of the stone is now being diverted up to this brickworks. So I think we are going to have to use this one here just outside of Allentown. And how would we get the stone up there? Well, we have a freight line here already in use, we, and it's already triple, sorry, quad tracked. And why is it quad tracked? I don't rightly know. We only have one line running down here after all. Was it a stabling thing? I'm not quite sure. Either way, we could continue the quad tracking efforts as far as... Well, we could actually maybe snap it into here if we're careful. And then have it, again, stay quad tracked following around here following the route of this one, bypassing the station, following all of this. This would have to be quad tracked as well because we're going to have quite a few lines running down here soon. And then coming up here, diverting around the station and into Hartford Construction Materials Plant. So I think that's what we're going to do next. So just so our intentions are clear, let's go ahead and put down our stations where we think we're gonna utilize them now arguably we don't need this road here so let's get rid of that it's not a connection to a second city it's only coming up to here so we don't really need it and saying that we probably don't need this one either and this just gives us a lot more real estate to work with got concerned then I thought that was the one we're about to use but it's not it's the one that I mistook for a quarry a few moments ago so we don't need to be overly concerned by that right so we would want this to be positioned like I think like that is there anything above us hmm we'll keep it open because we might have something else going on up there a little bit later but if not it doesn't matter Let's just rename this to the Hartford Brickworks. Hopefully that's not the same name we have for this one here. No, because that's a quarry first of all, so of course it's not going to be the same, you idiot. Anyway, so there's one of the stations we're going to use. And the second one is going to be up here. The terrain is a little bit rough around here, so we're going to have to bear that in mind. But I think we're going to be okay. We have plenty of money for terraforming and and tunnels and the like so it shouldn't be too much of a problem and if we put that there and this will be Allentown Quarry and this will just feed into this bit of quad track here as I said we're going to need this quad track extending so something like this where did that where's this yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, that's fine. 
and this will run all the way down we're not going to get this completed in today's episode I shouldn't imagine but we can at least make a start on it so this ensures the stone on its way through is not causing any delays to the delivery of the uh, crude oil which is quite critical I'm going to say those signals will need removing they're probably a little bit too close in fact I'm going to say those ones will as well so we'll have to reposition these signals here and hopefully we can get this to snap in somewhere onto the existing line maybe if we go in reverse direction so to speak like that yes wonderful and can we do the same there yes we can so this remains relatively seamless which is good we don't have anything running down there though so it doesn't really matter and let's go ahead and replace some of the signals that we've just had to remove so we want one there and we would want one there and we would want one there that is a little bit hideous in fact that's quite a lot hideous but I might just do that off camera between episodes that signal there can serve this junction as well so that's fine and if we do something like this yes and then where do the tracks separate I think it's about here we should be able to do this like that that signal will need removing so essentially our trains would obviously be on these outer tracks they would then come here and use the new double slip switches to get onto this line and then on the way back they would come down here use a double slip switch here and get onto the line so we'd want that right, let's just make them all because then we know we've covered all bases that one and that one we don't need to make double slip switches I don't think so at this point now we can continue on let's just get rid of that with our track extension do we have anything running down here yes we do I think that's the uh, the grain that we have coming down here already I mean arguably the uh, the stone and the grain could just share the tracks but what the heck we've started this now so we're gonna finish it in true mastermind fashion I've started so I'll finish anyway enough of that we carry on let's see so what do we have going on here so all four platforms are in utilization sorry all three platforms it would be most advantageous if I could learn to count so what we're gonna do we're now gonna bring these together and then immediately have them separate over the other side like this and if we can get a decent speed out of that 60 miles an hour right now no 53 so yeah decent enough speed and like that and that looks okay and then our stone delivery trains are gonna run on these outer tracks now which we're gonna have bypass the station entirely and in fact what we'll do is we'll actually stick down some lengths of track like this and this is going to be the bypass so this is where the trains will just thunder straight on through without or with minimal disruption to the loading and unloading that's occurring or that may be occurring on platform at the time and then connect them in like that let's get rid of that now we don't need that anymore and there and then they will run out Ooh, that was quite nice I like that is that snapped to that set of tracks I don't think it is yet but it will be in a moment hopefully hmm. oh there it is how does that look yeah I like that we'll go for that sort of setup and then you're just gonna obviously come back and connect in yourself like that so all this is going to be one way and where do we want to be heading so we're carrying on 
for the uh, for the duration, so that's all fine. So we've got quite a lot of stuff going off around here. I think we've got some stabling tracks here. I think that's why we've got three. Because we have the grain coming in and we have the food going out. So we have a bit of a pen, pen, pentagonal track. I, I should know the term. We have five tracks before we got back to the, uh, the quad tracking. Right, so what's happening here? Why are you struggling with this? Maybe now you're going to be okay so far. So, yep, yep, yep. All the way, all the way. Perfect. A little bit fiddly there at times, but that's fine. At what point... Oh, no, we're going to follow it yet. So we don't need to worry about where we're going to branch off because we're following it all the way around from this point to the station that we have at the farm. Again, it's been a little bit fiddly. It is still, yeah, it's all snapped together, which is fine. Is it? Yes. It's just been a little bit awkward at times. And at this point, I'm going to do something a little bit different. So we'll go as far as there. So we'll bring the, uh, the extra track down as well. And then instead of having it have this fairly sharp turn in, I might stretch it out and have it do it have it do its own thing, sort of like and if we can hopefully this will work. I think if we hold shift now, it won't snap anymore, as we can see. I'm not it's not snapping. There we go, now it is, now it's not. So I think if we do Oh no, 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 not that. Basically what I wanted to do is this to be away from these tracks a little and have it more diagonal rather than curved but it doesn't seem what about if we come this way and do it well first of all don't do anything like that because that's just ridiculous right if we go to there now I think we should be okay to snap back in and it keeps it a little bit straighter let's see yes yeah, we'll do that just to have it a little bit different. So it breaks away before coming back in. What is going on there? I don't know. And then what we're going to do while we're here is just smooth that off like that. And what the heck, let's chuck the ballast in there as well while we're here. So yeah, just something a little different. Anyway, regardless, we press on. Hopefully we can do this in as fewer sections as possible. I mean, look at that. We're snapping to all the way through here. Collision there. Is that the... Yeah, it's got a problem with the tunnel. But we can address that. Ah. That isn't right. So let's just... Un what's happened there? So you snapped parallel there, but here you're not. I don't understand that. Right, let's get rid of all of that. There's me trying to save a bit of time and do it all in a wanna. And it's just made a complete mess of it. So I've actually made more work for myself than I would have done if I'd have just got on with it normally, but oh well. Right, looks like we're almost back to where things are normal. Yes, okay. So we might have to do it in the shorter increments, let's see. Nope, so far so good. That's snapping nicely. Yep. We must be getting close now. Here it is. Wonderful. Now let's just keep a close eye on this when we do the, uh, the return leg. And hopefully it doesn't mess up. So far so good. Yep, all good thus far. And I think we're getting close to yep there it is look there's the track waiting for us yeah there we go now let's see if we can tackle this tunnel there we go that's worked fine first time of asking absolutely wonderful so you're coming on through the tunnel as well right how close yep we're nearly at the breakaway point so I might do something like I did 
last time, and rather than having it this reasonably tight or sharp merge point, we'll put those tracks in there, like that. And if we then do the same thing we did previously, and have it come out at its own sort of I've never been able to what I hmm, never been able to do that before. Let's just uh, move on from that. That was a, I'm not sure how I caused that or what I was doing, but well, I know what I was doing. I just don't know how I was doing it. How does that look? Sad. That's just that's just silly because it's is it going up to come back down? It is, isn't it? So let's forget that idea. Let's just have it do do it normally, shall we say? I'm not... There we go. Is that snapping? Why is it being weird there? Well, no, it's not too bad. And now we can bring in the rest of the track. And we should be pretty good. How does it look? Yeah, it's fine. So we're nearly there now. So we'll. Um, what I think what we'll do, we'll get this finished. Get the track laid in and finished. And uh, we'll call it a day for today's episode, I think. I mean, this is the bulk of the work right here anyway. Ah, no, this is electrified. Okay. Must remember that. And consider upgrading it. Okay. Nearly there. And how do we want to handle the through... The, the, the bypass? Couldn't think of the word then. Well, I think what I'm tempted to do is tunnel underneath just to be different so different for different sake so let's have it branch away and then start heading underground and we'll do it at a, a long distance and that just reduces the impact of the gradient I think we're getting close to... Yep, yeah, there we go. We'll go as deep as that, and from here we'll stay level. Providing the ground doesn't start to fall away anytime soon. Which I don't think it looks like it does. So if we do... Yeah, one collision there. Let's ha Oh yeah, you need to start coming up. Collision. There, no collision. So going straight underneath the farmhouse, so hopefully we're not impacting his foundations too much. And from here we should be able to come out without too much difficulty. And how's the gradient? Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. It'll do. And bring you into there. We need the diamond. And there we go. And that's, in fact, the last thing we'll do while we're in the area so we don't forget is actually upgrade these lines here to electrified. They're not using electric locomotives, of course, because they'd be complaining about it, but we may as well upgrade them while it's in our mind so we don't forget later on. And I think this must be one of the few stretches of track that I didn't upgrade between episodes. Uh, the signal work on these new lines I will handle off camera, but I'll not set the line up off camera. I'll just do all the, uh, the signaling for it, and then in the next episode we'll be ready to start the delivery from Allentown Quarry. In fact, no, we won't because we haven't connected it, so yeah, I'll do the signal work, and then we'll get this connected. We'll start the line running and then we can see if we can get the bricks back from here into here without any complications which I think we should be able to do looking at it because they can just come down here where the food delivery trains come down as well we we'll also have to look at what platform we're going to use because we need to get the rest of them connected up now but that again we'll do it uh, on camera not off camera has New York received any goods yet? No, not yet. I'm hoping our trains have arrived at least. Yeah, there they go. Look, 
So you've not taken a delivery yet. Are you the first train to arrive? That is the question. So that's the one we're looking at. Yeah, I think 58 was the one, the lead train. Yeah, here's the, uh, the, the trailing train. So what we are going to have to do here is allow some stabling to take place. So we don't block in the uh, or block out the steel and or the plastics coming in. Well, I don't think of the plastics; they come from the opposite direction. So we'll quickly do the stabling now. So let's just quickly pause it, have this branch off at nice high speed, and then run a good length down here to say how far is the train? Where's the train? Yeah, we'll we'll go to the, we'll go as far as this signal. Again, nice high speeds there. And then if we chuck down some signals down here, and let's just marry them up with any existing signals that we have first of all. So that's one, that's two blocks. Uh, that's good. We only have two trains anyway, so that's going to be more than enough. And what we need to do is find the train and it is the goods delivery for New York City. Oh, is it New York City goods delivery? Ah, I gave it the wrong uh, identifying. Oh, no, no, that's not, that's right. That is the right one. Right, let's do it the easy way. I think I might have. Ah, that's, that's, yeah, that's the one. I got confused there. Right, so manage the line and on your way in to the goods factory so after that signal we want you to come in this way and that way you're not going to keep our steel from getting onto the platform there we go and yeah that's where we'll end it for today's episode so our first train is picking up a load it's already got a full load which is fantastic no waiting around there and we'll take a cab ride and I think we're going to go on one of the new class 9000s because they are wonderful looking trains so let's go to the farm hopefully we've got one just leaving okay so we've got a loading speed penalty on these now so the last last thing we will do is just extend these out yeah it's going to remove a field but what the heck and give them an, a longer platform so we don't have that loading speed penalty there we go. Right, have you got a full load yet? No. Shall we send it on its way regardless? In fact, no. I'll go to four times speed. I'll pause the date while we're here. And when we've got a full load, I'll bring it back to normal speed. And that's when we'll start our cab ride. Okay, so we have now uh, got a full load and we've just departed the farm and we're on our way to the food production plant over in Yonkers on the new Class 9000. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the episode today. And if you did enjoy, please consider leaving a like on the video because it really does help. And if you haven't yet subscribed and you'd like to follow along in the future, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below as well. But for now, all that remains for me to say is, as always, ladies and gentlemen, take very good care of yourselves. It's ta-ta for now. <laughs>